anyone here who has taken the time to, uh, to have the curiosity and the interest in hearing all these really uh, smart and talented people. Um, you know, uh, I go to a lot of conferences, and part of my job is actually to, kind of what Baba was saying, is to see what the trends are in the industry and to understand uh, if we're solving the right problem, um, or maybe we have a unique problem, and we kind of formulate this event around those those issues. And so that's why it, not every every year it's a different sort of uh, train of thought um, and subject matter. And um, I think the key aspect of this is we are all here to learn something, or and 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 as importantly to teach someone else something else, something that they may be interested in. Um, so this has been uh, the largest event we've ever had. So thank you for everyone for that. Um, the stakes keep getting higher every year. Um, I don't know what it is in, in the commercial real estate business, but the event space like uh, triples every year. So actually this is, I think the first time we did, the first time we did this was 2013, but uh, last, uh, compared to last year, this, this space is probably three or four times more expensive. So um, that's, I guess that's the solution the commercial real estate developers have come up with. Um, <laughs> but, um, so I first want to thank all the speakers and I think they're, uh, we, they're, uh, they deserve a round of applause, another round of applause for all the... Um, and, and you know, to be honest, we, we invite the speakers. We want to hear. We want to learn from them, and so we want to hear what they have to say. Um, uh, and um, we clearly heard, learned a lot today about about what they're doing, what they're up to. Um, we have a ton of sponsors. We, uh, you know, like we don't have traditional sponsors per se. These are people who have given their time and their effort to come here, to to um, you know, to give their their knowledge and their talks to to and, and workshops, etc. Um, uh, for this particular event. So another a round of applause for these guys, too. Um, I will say, you know, we are not a not-for-profit uh, event organize, organizer. That is not our goal. Um, we profit from everything that we learn from everybody else and to, to meet people here and hopefully raise the, the bar of, of technology and, and, and um, in the industry. Um, huge, huge, huge thanks for, to, to Dave and Giselle for organizing this entire event, start to finish. Um, again, uh, there is countless hours that goes into this, um, from, uh, from, you know, from Friday's virtual workshops to the whole hackathon that's going to happen this weekend, um, which is always a, a really nice uh, sort of uh, ending to this, th this event, um, which hopefully in many ways is the beginning for collaborations, for um, you know, new friendships and, um, you know, to anticipation of next year. So big uh, round of applause for these guys. Um, so um, I want to talk a little bit about, I want to kind of end this with kind of a thread that has been interestingly and coincidentally sort of talked about here today. And, um, you know, I the team we've we've coalesced the team into uh, from from our all the way from our traditional sort of applications development and, and advanced modeling uh, to our data and knowledge team to our our, our our traditional BIM teams, and we thought that this was the right thing to do because everything that we do with technology ends up, uh, you know, sort of in in the desktop uh, in front of people's desks. So we what you heard today about not having people wonder where a tool is or what tool to use. Um, this is the goal, and um, so we've sort of combined the team, so we're a much bigger organization than we used to be. Uh, the stakes are higher, but I think the impact will be higher as well. Um, ChatGPT does a much better job of telling what Core Studio does than I do. And, you know, I will say when I first did this, this is it's an interesting aspect of this, and, and potentially changes the paradigm of how you, how you use social media if you know that social media is going to be part of the data set that is going to be driving your, what people, you know, Google you, um, maybe you have to change how you market. Because all of this 
is 100% right. And it came from our marketing team, and it came from my post, came from my team's post. And so, um, and it does a better job than me in order writing this. So that's another aspect um, of, of, of how, you know, some of these large language models can change what, uh, how we, or how we work as a team, both internally and externally. The larger strategy, and this is something that I drew, I don't know, eight, seven, or eight years ago, um, probably, is um, in many ways, this event represents the far right. Uh, so it's sort of the, the high end sort of, uh, you know, R&D that, uh, you know, everyone here has a curiosity about um, and, you know, working together to sort of pull the industry forward. And this is the strategy for our team. And um, I think the harder part is at the bottom left, to be honest with you, as we just talked about. And, you know, it's kind of like I probably should have put a boot there, right, to kick people in the ass to, to, to do a better thing. But the, 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 the long-term aspect of that is that the, the company does get better over time. It takes a long time. Um, but if you're not sort of um, very specifically trying to target a very hard problem, um, you will not solve it. You will be a, just a very, you know, sort of small little team that is impacting some aspects of the firm, but not the entire firm. So that is our sort of big goal. It's harder, um, but it's also, I would say, more rewarding at the end of the day. Um, so I want to talk about collective intelligence. And um, so a little bit of a little short story. And, um, you know, I, I did a little, little, teeny little bit of research about, I Googled um, job openings from uh, larger companies, um, including ours. Um, and, you know, nobody had any uh, in their architectural positions or even structural positions, anything about parametric design or computational design or advanced skills. I'm talking about the largest companies that are represented. And you would think after all the years that we've been talking about this, that there would be something in there. It'd be at least a little extra credit that someone would get as they enter a company. So I, and I will say my strategy for hiring Core Studio, which is I'm, I'm lucky I can, I can do this myself, is I hire, I don't, I don't really care where someone went to college. I don't, you know, it doesn't mean anything to me. What is really important is, are they curious people? Are they, will, are they yearning to solve a problem? Um, are, they, are they people that question the status quo? Um, and, you know, are they just generally good people? Um, and there is no one in our studio that is the same. We are all different, so we have an incredibly diverse team, skills, nationalities, genders, cultures, et cetera. And uh, I think that is the, sort of the key, and I think that's like, uh, I would say, representation of what's in this room. And so I'll, I'll talk a little bit, some of my sort of more seasoned uh, team members, and all of them, um, so Nick, was, I think the, has been here the longest, um, came from New Zealand, used to work on a ship, did some modeling, like, you know, physical modeling, um, came from Stevens Institute of Technology. Actually, they all came from St Stevens Institute of Technology. Um, and knew Revit, Katia, Grasshopper, and, uh, you know, and, and so I asked him, so when can you actually start? And he says, well, I gotta spend two months building the solar decathlon for Stevens Institute. I was like, that's a good guy. That's the kind of guy that I want. I didn't know what I was gonna do, at that time, we were kind of a modeling team, so we needed the, the, the modeling experience. But beyond that, I think that was sort of that diverse background was something that I was interested in. And then Ben came along. Ben was also at Stevens. Um, uh, and the reason why there's a Stevens connection because the director of Core Studio at the time, uh, Jonathan Schumacher, used to teach at Stevens. So I was invited over there. I was at Pratt at the time. I invited to give a talk about structural, like parametric structures. And I came there with uh, Eric Thor Thorson. Ben may remember this. Uh, those of you who may remember Eric Thorson, he wrote a lot of the uh, Rhino Bin back in the day. Um, so um, all I remember was Ben sitting in the background asking questions like left, left and right, back and forth. And then when he actually sent his CV, he wrote a really nice parametric little app that sort of changed the a shade, you know. Um, and I was like, that's super cool too, the configurator. Configurator was not a thing back in you know, 2012 or whenever this was. So that was, again, something that, I don't care about the education, I care about the people and what they're willing, the, 
problems they want to solve. Elshin came as, started as an intern, and I'll remember that she already knew interop at the time. So I think, I think you know, uh, Jonathan was teaching that in the university. And, all, and I just remember she was super fast, like everything, and just you know, asking for more work along the way. And so, so, and she's still like to this day, you know, the same way. And so I, I make this point because I think there's a kernel of that in people that join these types of conferences, or at least this conference. Um, so in many ways, we are all the black sheep, right? We are all sort of, um, we've drank the Kool-Aid of, of um, parametric design and computation. And um, I will say I, I probably over-relied on ChatGPT and Dolly 3, because uh, I was having a lot of fun. Um, but you know, again, I thought this is a small little kernel. I would not be able to do this last year. So you know, have, have this be part of my story. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, again, I think it's that curiosity that is really critical to stay ahead of the robots, essentially, to stay ahead of AI. Um, diversity is a huge component. I ne don't necessarily specifically say I want you know this many people of this color or nationality or gender or whatever. It's not like that. Um, but I do think that our diversity is what makes us really strong, um, both in, in our team, but also um, in, this, in, this, uh, in this room. And there are statistics about this that prove this. Even if this thing is, look, if, 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 if you told your company that you could raise your, your, your profitability by 1% due to some level of diversity, they would drool over that. And so, um, even again, this is this, these, these, when I look at McKinsey, I look at the trend of McKinsey, not necessarily the specifics. So I think that's a huge aspect of the, sort of the makeup of my team, but also uh, this, this, this um, conference. Um, so the nice thing about also this, this event is that there's kind of a buildup. And the buildup is starts with the, the training, which I think is, I don't want to get into it, but it's like there's a huge lack of training in the industry, both in the industry, but also in practice, and including my firm. So we're, we have a whole strategic goal about that. It's not an easy, ask, not an easy thing to do because it takes people away from projects, et cetera. But um, there's a yearning for training. And so I think that's evident in the fact that we have you know, hundreds of people taking these workshops. Um, and the other nice thing about the, the, the hackathon event is sort of br there's no barriers in terms of what you need to do or what you're expected to do. It's whatever you want to do. And I think it's kind of like, you know, the more you speak to people here in the room, which is, I think even the greater aspect of this, this event is that is the side conversations that you have, the new people that you meet, and the relations that you build. So um, I don't like to use the word innovate. I've never believed in that necessary term necessarily. Um, because a lot of people talk about it, but actually don't do anything. Um, so the, the idea of the hackathon, you actually do something. And innovation will come out of that. So a little bit about democratizing intelligence. So I want to talk a little bit about how we've been experimenting with large language models. And um, I kind of wanted to break down into the elements of what we do as consultants. and. Um, um, well, let me start. Let me start this. So, in 2014, um, I gave this talk at this event. Uh, I called it uh, symbiosis. And at the time, everyone was talking about big data, like all the tech companies, big data, big data, big data. I was like, what the hell does that mean? So, I kind of it was just my idea of hypothesizing about what big data actually meant. And so, you know, there's an aspect, a huge aspect of the fact that. Our industry is very siloed, everybody knows about that. Um, that we have a lot of data, but it's messy. But there's kernels of data in there that are really, really important and that, as, as many people have said here today, if we were able to harness that, can be very, very useful for the next generation of engineers and architects. And more specifically towards our organizations, you know, yes, we deliver drawings and models and, you know, designs. But what we're really delivering is our intelligence. And the power of our firm is about the people that are in the office. 
And this image here is an image of Tom Scarborough. Joe luckily is still in the office, he's executive chairman, but Charlie Thornton and Richard Tomasetti, who are no, no longer there, Anya Braza has retired, uh, Bob Sin has retired. These were like the giants of the industry, that the only people that get the benefit of their knowledge is the people that work directly with them. And so the, the, the little grasshopper diagram was, what if we can decompose, extract the smart aspects, not everything, I mean, this is not, you know, we're not saying everything, but project-related intelligence into an application. That is really, really powerful from experts and, you know, monsters in the field. And I didn't have an answer. It was just a hypothesis that that's what was, is what, what would significantly empower our companies and our, and our staff. So I drew this years ago. I was on a plane. This is actually a crumb analysis, believe it or not, that went, went hourly. Um, but uh, the, the concept is what if the entire firm's knowledge was accessible through an application? And um, again, I didn't have the answer for that. This was eight years ago or seven years ago that I drew this diagram. But, um, you know, it's, it was, we had to think about it because um, as we were, you know, when I first started at Thornton Thomas Study, we were 150 people or something. We're 1,700 now. So how do you scale the sort of, uh, you know, studio, um, you know, learning culture to a 50-person office uh, culture company. And then large language models came around. So this is my statement, and I, I will stand by this, because I think the cool thing about AI and ML, it, it's not necessarily a, just for technical engineering or architecture. It will impact the entire aspect of the company from human resources to finance to marketing um, and beyond. And so that is significant. Uh, you know, it's gonna be in Word and Excel and PowerPoint, et cetera. Um, uh, Andrew Ng goes one step further and he says electricity. Now, of course, those firms that he's been a part of basically wouldn't have a company if it wasn't for AI. We're a little bit different. We're a little bit, we have to use our, combine AI with our inherent skills and intelligence. Um, but still, that's a, big, that's a pretty significant statement. So we started playing with uh, GPT, and I'm calling it 0000 whatever one, because this is only the beginning. Um, so the first example of this is, um, uh, I will say I'll preface it, the person asking the question um, is Sergey Pigash, so not a robot. The answer was we hooked up a voice or an, uh, a natural language model to ChatGPT. So, um, and we pointed it to um, our internal intranet data. So 15 plus years of just, you know, uh, fairly structured actually data um, that you can ask a question. It's basically an internal resource. So I think I have to. It's running. Okay, good. Yeah, I wanted to. Sorry. This one. Hi there, this is my first day at TT. What software do I use to fill out my timesheet? To fill out your timesheet at Thornton Tomazetti, you need to use Dell Tech Vision. You can access Dell Tech Vision by following these steps. One, go to Spark 2. Click the My Resources drop down three. Click the second Dell Tech Vision, i.e. alternate link. This will open Dell Tech Vision and you can submit your timesheet as usual. If you need help with using Dell Tech for the first time, you can ask your local accounting and finance representatives or reach out to the Solution Center for assistance. And what about installing software? If I need SAP, eTabs, or Rhino, whom do I ask? For assistance with installing software like SAP, eTABS, or Rhino, you should contact the Solution Center at Thornton Thomas Eddy. They can provide support and guidance on software installation and usage. 
Hey, um, so I clicked on the link in an email and my screen just turned blue. My laptop fans are in overdrive. I think this is some kind of malware. What do I do? It seems like your laptop might be experiencing a malware issue. I recommend disconnecting your device from the network or Wi-Fi immediately and contacting the solution center team at Thornton Thomas Eddy for assistance. You can reach them via phone at plus. I, I, not, I mixed that up because it was the correct number. So I don't want everybody calling that number. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but so this is this the first test. And um, uh, well, you know, this is not going to solve the world's problems. But if I were to try to Google, I'm not Google, search that in, within our internet, it would take a long, long time and um, probably might not find it. Um, so, you know, just as a search engine, you're talking to a large database of information is, is very powerful from, a, from, a, from, a, from, a, from an engineering standpoint where we need to find information fast. So, um, so this is, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go back here. So this one, the next one is, we have a series of machine learning models, and this one happens to be a, a, a trust model. Omen hooked it up so that the person, this chatbot, is talking to the machine learning model to ask it how to design a trust. So there's no, there's no voice here, by the way. So it immediately knows what the inputs are required to design that trust. So you're, you're asking a trust designer what it needs to design a specific trust. And then our machine learning model spits out a design. And that's the other aspect of this. You don't have to have perfect English. It kind of knows, it's learned, uh, you know, sort of the mistakes that pe yeah, people make. Um, it knows that LL equals live load. We didn't train at that. Um, so, we are speaking to our, basically, one of our designers, which is pretty significant, I think. And then lastly, um, we hooked up the same engine to thousands of our PDFs of uh, what we call uh, project sheets. So um, for our marketing team to search for the, the right types of projects for a particular RFP or something, it takes a very long, long time. Um, they probably, most of them don't have the experience and um, so we hooked it up so that they can go through the history of Thornton Thomas Eddy projects, find the, the, key, the key projects that make sense for this particular project, and then start to sort of get, get them a head start for starting their marketing material. The other nice thing is that the references that the materials come from uh, are also accessible as well. So I will say we did find that ChatGPT does hallucinate sometimes, so uh, which is, not like a insignificant aspect um, for any of these large language models. So that is something that we will need to solve. I mean, it's not perfect, um, but uh, there is a, it is a sort of risk reward type of thing. It's very, very fast. This would take, this would take someone days, um, and they may not find the right answer um, in our search, in a PDF search. Um, so I, again, I wanna thank you and applaud everyone who has you know, spent a long day here um, going through this conference. Um, so um, it's really just a sort of food for thought about what is possible. And, and you know, um, I, I sort of encourage people to test, 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 and test because I still think that AI and machine learning is a significant game changer for our industry.